All right, welcome to the baddest dude's first foray into Hearthstone content. What's I'm up? I'm Mediocre Dude. With me is Showtime. Hey, how you doing, guys? Um, what I was looking to do was kind of a unique twist on a Hearthstone card review. Um, a lot of card reviews come from pro streamers, and they evaluate the metagame and what they expect the competitive metagame to look like after the patch comes out. But I wanted to do another twist on almost evaluating the game design as much as the cards themselves and how well a new player could evaluate the cards um, in the context of the set, at least. Um, okay. Uh, so I think the first uh, items that we should review are the quests, because these will introduce many of the new archetypes that players will want to try. And I think a lot of players are really excited about whether they'll be competitive or not. Um, okay, let's, so let's do this. Let's try and jump right in. Yeah. Uh, the first quest that we're going to look at is the Druid quest, Jungle Giants, uh, which is um, summon five minions with five or more attack, and then when you complete the quest, you get Barnabas the Stomper, which is a five mana, eight eight beast, which has a battle cry, Reduce the cost of your minions in your deck to zero. Now, when you play a quest card, it's just a zero mana or a one mana card rather, and it uh, goes into your secret slot um, above your character, and you can see its progress as it goes. Um, the rewards can be pretty, pretty powerful. I think that anybody looking at a card like Barnabas is impressed um, reduce the cost of minions in your deck to zero that is a pretty uh, pretty valuable card yeah um, 88 for five is also huge um, okay why, why don't you explain to them what that means hmm? 888 for five I guess that's generally pretty pretty common nomenclature but maybe not five mana uh, eight attack eight defense. That's something we maybe take for granted, certain nomenclature in games like this. So do you have any thoughts about um, the quest reward or... Does this card excite you, the quest itself? So, let's see. Legendary quest spell will award the following when completed. Um, so the Barnabas the Stomper is the, the award. Mm -hmm. um, and to get it, you need to summon five minions with five or more I would attack. definitely say, just by looking at this card, yes. Uh, it's It only costs five mana uh, to use. Eight attack, eight health. That's really good. And then what it does, the battle cry. Isn't that... The battle cry is... Um, now, you guys got to keep in mind, I'm a Hearthstone noob. And that's okay. Because, you know, a lot of the players are relatively casual... Um, and Blizzard wants to appeal to that kind of crowd. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing wrong with that at all. And I think that it, if they are going to appeal to that crowd, we should see if uh, the designs um, speak to them. So, yep. So I represent you guys that are just learning. Mediocre Dude taught me this game um, over the past year. I have taken a fascination into it. I don't play it as much as I should. But uh, it, it's great. I, I have definitely have an interest in it and to learn more and better. It's just it's just got a huge backing. To go back to my point, how I'm a noob, Battle Cry, um, isn't that like a uh, at the beginning or before like when you put it down? Yeah. So it reduced the cost of your minions. So it's like a preemptive attack, right? It's just when it comes into play. Yep. When you play the so card. reduce the cost of, of minions in your deck to zero. That's fantastic. So yes, I would be ecstatic. To receive this card as a reward to answer your question. Mm -hmm. um, now it is notable that the it doesn't reduce the cards in your hand to zero, which means like you can't just play this and just play out your hand full of bullshit. That's not going to happen. But once you start drawing cards, and this might uh, inform you that you want some card draw in your deck. Um, so once you get that quest out or quest completed, you play that out and you want to draw some cards so you can throw down some fatties. Yeah. That sounds exciting. Yep. Um, but the main reason I wanted to present the quest first was we needed a little context um, to evaluate cards, perhaps, with five or more attack. 
Uh, so when we, as we see those, we'll take note, hey, this contributes to this quest. I think it's important to understand the context. Um, I think it's also worth mentioning, which I should have mentioned about three minutes ago, that quest cards start in your hand, always. Um, okay. They will be in your Volgan. Um, you can choose to, to send them back if you don't want them for that particular game for whatever reason. You feel like uh, your opponent, uh, it will not be good against your opponent. Um, but you always have the option of having it and playing it on turn one, so every turn after that you can contribute to your quest. Now, what is... Did you already explain this? What is Legendary Quest? Uh, that's that's the Jungle Giants uh, summon five minions with five or more attack. Okay, I see. Quest, so... Reward, summon five minions with five or more attack. So Barnabas is never in your deck. Uh, once you complete the quest, Barnabas is added to your hand. So you put that card down first, <clears throat> and then if you can summon five minions with five or more... Over the course of the game. Okay, got it. Yep. Alright, so I'm learning in this uh, in this as well. Learning is occurring. So that's this, this is what makes this interesting. So yeah, like basically he's teaching you guys about the new cards that are coming out. We're basically evaluating them, and then I'm learning at the same time. So this is more of like mediocre dude's uh, uh, video here. So basically, giving him all the. This is terrifying. This is very terrifying. But, but it's cool. Would you like to move on to the next one? Sure thing. Uh, next is the hunter quest. Also one mana. All of them will be. The quest is to play seven one cost minions. And then the reward is Queen Carnassa, which is also a 5-mana 8-8, but you shuffle 15 Raptors into your deck, which are 1-mana 3-2s with Battlecry draw a card. So are we just going over all the quest cards yes, first? Yes, all the quest cards first. Got it. Now we're on the same page. All right, so the next one is, what's that, the Marsh Queen? Yep. Let me take a look at that picture. <laughs> the picture's important, right? The Marsh Queen. Uh, ooh, we got a Velociraptor looking at a, a little gnome over there. Or it looks like Gizmo almost. <laughs> um, Clever so, girl. So, so the quest is play seven one-cost minions. Okay, fair enough. Um, and then you get the Queen Carnassa. Uh, the Queen Carnassa, it's a five mana, eight attack, eight health. So I guess in your guys', or I shouldn't say your guys', our jargon, it's five cost, eight, eight. So, um, battle cry, shuffle fifteen raptors into your deck. Damn. So that's like, you won't want to lose cards in this game, right? Or you, because if you lose cards, it's over for you, right? If you run out of cards, you begin taking damage each turn. Um, right. So this, basically, is like insurance. Now, mind you, when you play them, you draw a card. So that'll kind of eat through your insurance quickly, but in return you get a bunch of raptors, which may just take over the game on their own. Now, what are raptors? They're like, right here, the the three two for one. That's the, cry draw a card. That's so that's the, the Carnassus brood is what uh, is the fifteen raptors that it's talking about. Yep. Perfect. Battle cry draw a card, and that that so not only do you get fifteen, but it, it branches out to drawing a, a, another card into your deck mm -hmm. when, you, when you do play it. So it increases your chances of just like playing more cards. You can also draw more raptors. You, you play go. one, draw another one, play another one, draw another one. There you go. Nice. Um, so in this one you're playing you're paying, playing seven one cost <laughs> minions. Seven. A little more than five with the, with the druid quest. And they're one cost minions which are not always impactful on the as impactful on the game in, in a long game at least. Um, there are excellent cards in the early turns, a very high value. Um, so, uh, but seven does that feel like too many? Does, does this feel like an exciting card? Seven one cost minions. Seven one cost minions. Um, do I think that's too many? I don't think so. I could use more. Actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you're on top of this. Oh, yeah. Um, and it's... This one has, like, the most open time period that you can complete it. Because you can just be, like, one mana, 
And you you have you you can spend as many car as much mana as you have on one mana cards go through the first four turns of the game and get it done. Mm -hmm. Potentially. Like, this is maybe the only one that you could actually play Queen Carnazza on turn 5 as a 5-mana 8-8. Hmm. And that's a huge tempo swing. Hmm. I'm pretending to understand everything you're saying. Hmm. So, if it, so basically I can, like, drop down 10 fucking Raptors in, in the later game. In one round. Is that what you're saying? No. <laughs> Damn it. Damn it. So definitely keep that in mind as we look at one mana cards going forward. Um, next we'll hit the uh, the mage quest. Um, open the way gate. Ooh. Now this one's really interesting. This one's a little different than just playing one type of card several times. The quest is cast six spells that didn't start in your deck. Okay. And then the quest reward is time warp, five mana, take an extra turn. Okay. Um, what do you make of a card like that? Isn't that a bit of a puzzle? So I, I'm just going to have to be honest, I guess. Just straight up from my noobness. Like, not try to... <laughs> I know. It breaks your brain a little bit. How right. am I going to cast spells that didn't start in my deck? <laughs> um, but there are absolutely ways to get them. Um, now go down to the, re the reward. So take an extra turn. Um, at the cost of five. Uh, so... Hmm. What does that actually mean, mediocre dude? Like, so I put down this card and I just. What does it mean by take an extra turn? So you know, normally it would go to your opponent's turn after you click on turn, but instead it will just oh, go back to you. Just again. like a one hundred percent full extra turn. Yep. Sign me up. <laughs> That's the kind of card I would actually strive for. So, yeah. so I basically need to spend six magic spells that aren't in my deck. Mm -hmm. How do I do that? Uh, there are some cards that add cards to your deck. Or, or to your hand um, that didn't start in your deck. For example, a classic example is Babbling Book, which is incidentally not in this set, but a previous set. Just a simple one mana, one one, and when you play it, it adds a random mage spell to your deck. Okay, got it. So that's the kind of effect that we're looking for. So it's, it's, it actually seems kind of like uh, pretty hard to get then. Um, it, if you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> if you don't have the right cards in your deck. <laughs> Cool. I like it a lot. I think it's a very valuable card. Yeah. And I like this idea of... Uh, is this is this a quest thing, a new concept? Yep. This is... I really like it. I, I like this idea that you... It, it adds flavor to the game. Like, it adds, like, right, more... Exactly. It adds, like, more substance to the game to, like... If you do... The, it's, it's, like, challenges. Or if you, like, if you played Mortal Kombat uh, X, the brutalities. Like, there's conditions that need to be met in order to do the brutality. This is like, well, you have to, these are conditions in order to use this move, right? which is the card. And it, it It's gives cool, your, I like it. It gives your deck some structure, you know, you're, something you're working toward. Very a cool. A game plan. Nice. Uh, so let's take a look at the Paladin quest. Um, the last Kaleidosaur quest cast six spells on your minions, and then your reward is Galvadon. Battle cry adapt eight times. Oh, what is adapt? You said adapt five times, actually. Sure did. No, you said eight. What did I say? You said adapt eight times. You might want to. Did I say eight eight? You as said well? you said adapt eight times. That I know 100. percent You monster. Reward Galvadon. Five mana. Five five. Adapt five times. <laughs> now what is adapt? Yeah, what is adapt? Um, when you play a card with adapt. You will be able to select from uh, 10 adaptations, three at a time, and those are Crackling Shield, Divine Shield, uh, Flaming Claws, three attack, Liquid Membrane, can't be targeted by spells or hero powers, Living Sporers, Death Rattle, Summon two 1-1 one -one Plants, Massive, Taunt, um, Bone spit, or bone spit, poison spit, poison spit. It's poisonous, <laughs> if you could imagine. Rocky and carapace. I love the card. He's just like, look at him. He's like, <laughs> 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 Rocky carapace, three health. Shrouding mist, stealth into your next turn. Volcanic might, plus one, plus one, or lightning speed, wind Sick. fury. 
Okay. So these, uh, these are called... Adaptations. Adaptations. And on this particular card, you can pick five of them. And they cost zero mana. Well, they're just added to the card when you play it. They're like an accessory. Yes. So, like, for the Flaming Claws, for example, it's plus three attack. It's like, in Final Fantasy, you're equipping, um, like, in a, like a ring that says plus three attack on with your sword. Sure. Kind of deal. Yeah. That's how I understand. And you can see the zero mana is the ring you put your finger through. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very uh, physical way to look at it. Hey, you want a Showtime to be your co-anchor for this, for this show? And I'm regretting that decision. <laughs> you're regretting that decision. <laughs> All right, so we know what adaptations are. Um, so which one, or what What do you think of when you see the opportunity to adapt five times? Oh man, I see a lot of opportunity actually. Like Taunt, I really like Taunt. That's a great um, ability. Mm -hmm. um, because it makes you go right to that, or it makes the enemy go right to that card, which is really great. So, Especially considering so, this can be a very resilient card. Right, and then you just stack that with plus three health. Um, possibly poison your enemy. Uh, poison? Oh, I guess that's a new uh, keyword this time. Uh, it means that uh, any da anytime it damages something, that thing dies, no matter how much health it had. It just, it just fucking dies? Yep. It's an instant kill? Yep. Poison. That makes sense. I mean, in, in the real life, yeah. you know, if you're poisoned, you're fucking done. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right? Um, so, so you like making a big, resilient taunt minion. Oh, yeah, easily. Especially with living sports. Look at how cute he is. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This set actually has a pretty big cuteness factor. There are some pretty cute dinosaurs, if you could imagine. Rocky Carapace will always be my favorite. It's like a goat. It's a really bad goat. Um, I think my favorite adaptation is can't be targeted by spells or hero powers. Um, when this comes on a reasonably sized minion, spells are like the biggest way to, to take advantage of a large minion and kill it for value. But the liquid membrane can kind of counteract that. Speaking of that, I love liquid membrane is probably my favorite name for a card in this, this series so far. Yeah, and Isn't that cool? it's liquid, pretty cool art. Liquid membrane, I like that. And we and we kind of saw the liquid membrane in the Angoro trailer as well. Angoro, um, which was really great, and we watched the rat video. Yep, <laughs> mandatory viewing. Yep. Um, the other thing I wanted to call attention to is Wind Fury which is the ability to attack twice. Um, however, a lot of cards with Oh, that's Wind... a great one. Yep. I like that one. A lot of cards with Wind Fury aren't very good, though, because they're not well statted. But, or you could be concerned that they're just going to die without really being able to attack twice and get lots of value out of it. But if you can adapt just the right minion with Wind Fury, you could really get the most out of it without really needing to run a bad minion with Wind Fury in your deck. So uh, adapt, adaptations are very flexible in that you could get the big taunt guy if you need to. You could also get the really aggressive wind fury guy if you need to. Mm -hmm. So those uh, options are really great. So that's crazy. That one card, um, basically its reward is all this. Yeah, you can choose five. And you get these cards in your regular deck. No, no. These are only they're, they're just the adaptations. These are So adaptations can only be given to you as a reward? Um, they're, they're just on some cards. They're just on some cards. Yeah. Like there's another card. But you uh, can use these cards with other cards and stuff, not just as a reward. Right. You, you can obtain so, these without just getting the reward. There are other cards that have have adapted, so that's a major mechanic. Oh, I see. I, I get what you're saying. Okay, got it. Yep. It's like an ability. Mm -hmm. Got it. You have to have a card that can use the ability adaptation. Exactly. Cast six spells on your minions. Um, Paladin is the class that casts spells on its minions quite a bit. Um, six spells is quite a lot, though. And a lot of times it can be a little risky to play spells on your minions. But it can also pay off very well, too. Um, and I think Galvedon is a major payoff for that as well. Okay. And then uh, you get the reward where you adapt five times. 
Um, so basically you have this, <clears throat> at, at its base you have the Galvedon is 5 cost, 5-5. Five, five. So you adapt 5 times, um, you just basically choose 5 adaptations to, to tag onto it. Yep, uh, oh, you'll, get a, you'll get a selection of 3 at a time, and you can get du uh, duplicates as well. And I like how his uh, like his illustration like looks like things could be attached to him too. <laughs> yeah. Like he's got that crystal on his back, and he just like he's like a mold. Pretty cool. He's just ready for it. Yeah, he's pretty cool. <laughs> We're moving on to the priest quest, Awaken the Makers. This is another pretty simple quest. Okay. Summon nine death rattle minions, and the reward is Amara, Warden of Hope. Which is also a five mana eight eight, but it also has taunt and battle cry. Set your hero's health to forty. Remember, it starts at thirty, so not only does it raise your health by ten, but it would also uh, heal any damage dealt to you during the game. That's huge. Um, isn't this what that guy said in the announcement? Yep, exactly. This was the first quest reveal. Yeah, in he the was, trailer. He was like, "Oh, that's crazy," or something. And it really is crazy. Like <laughs> it totally is. Um, you gotta summon sef seven death rattle minions, which a death rattle is when the card dies, basically. It does something, yes. It does something. So you summon seven of those, and you get that. And do these quest rewards, do they just kind of uh, come out of thin air? Um, or are they like... You know, the quest is a card in your deck um, that okay. you play out, and then once you complete the quest, the quest reward is added to your hand. Is there is there like a separate pile, or is it just comes out of thin air? It just comes out of thin air. Got it. Cool. Um, the one thing to note about this quest is it says uh, summon seven death rattle minions, which means you don't necessarily need to play them from your hand. So if you could find ways to summon death rattle minions, other ways, they'll work. Like, can't you just make a deck with a bunch of death rattles? Sure could. And the, see, that, and that just adds like a whole new strategy. Like, if you want to have, if you're the type of player that wants to play with 40 health, then you would just set your deck with at least seven death rattles. Yep. It's cool. And let's see. Ooh, the next uh, quest is a little tricky. This one is the Caverns Below, a rogue quest. Play four minions with the same name, and the reward it the reward is Crystal Core. For the rest of your game, your minions are five five. Okay. So every single minion. Yep. Now, so that's like a that's a trade-off though. Like, what if you have like a nine-nine? Well, I would you're guess losing in that if situation. you're if you're running this card, you're probably not running any nine-nines. Now, this this uh, quest is a bit of a puzzle. Play four minions with the same name, but you can only have two in a deck. Oh, interesting. Um, so, so do you, do you need to do other? Things. There are several cards. You've probably seen like Youthful Broom Brewmaster, which is a 3-2 for two, and it returns a uh, minion to your hand. Um, you need effects like that in order to replay the same I minions see. over and over again. So it's just a matter of playing them. Mm -hmm. So you have to actually go through a sequence of returning the cards back to you. Yep. Okay. Um, the, one of the classic rogue spells is Shadow <coughs> Step. Uh, zero mana. Uh, return a minion to your hand and then reduce its cost by two. That's another way to continually play the same card and trigger this uh, quest. Okay. Um, now with your concern of having things in your deck that are bigger than 5-5, five, five, a lot of the cards that support this strategy are going to be relatively small and Right, cheap. right, the ones that are so, like 2-2 two, two or like whatever. Right. So what you'll do is you'll be able to use these combo-centric cards to complete the quest and then after the fact, these cards will be huge finishers as well. Maybe not huge compared to, to the dinosaurs in this set, but mm -hmm. if you can fill the board with them, it would be in good shape. Totally got it. It's a like very it. interesting set. I uh, like quest. it. Another uh, pretty straightforward quest is the Shaman quest. Unite the Murlocs, summon 10 Murlocs. The reward is Megafin, another 5 Ooh, I like that. Megafin! Megafin! <laughs> He's so like punk rock. Look at him. Uh. <laughs> um, he is also a five mana eight eight, and his battle cry is fill your hand with random burlocks. I'm gonna step on your bonfire. <laughs> I'm gonna pull your bonfire out, bro. Lights out. Oh, sorry, disguise. Why? Because I'm Megafin. 
<laughs> now again, this one says summon mur uh, 10 murlocs, so they don't need to be played as minions from your deck. Uh, murlocs, I remember murlocs. Those guys are little buttheads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the best they're, way to they're the butt heads ones. put it up. Um, yeah, fill your hand with random murlocs. Well, there's actually a lot of Murloc support and in this set a, that we'll see. That's the battle cry, which is great, and it's a 8-8, it's eight, eight, which is fantastic. That's always a good one, especially at the cost of 5. Yeah. That's fucking good. That's a good card. Yep. Which is why they're rewards. Exactly. <laughs> uh, it's pretty unlikely that you'll be able to play most of these on turn 5, with the exception of maybe the Hunter, if you really dedicate your deck to it. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's something to keep in mind, but also just having that free mana on, a, on the same turn that you play a massive threat um, can be very powerful as well to make a big powerful turn nice. doing more than one thing. Next is the Warlock quest, probably my favorite. Um, the quest is discard six cards. And the reward is Nether Portal, which is five mana, open a permanent portal that summons three two imps. So at the end of each turn, two imps come out of either side of this portal. Oh, wow. So you get two, two imps each turn. How come it shows three on the card, then? Madness. Yeah, they should have thought about that one. <laughs> come on, Blizzard. A Blizzard. Come on. What, was there a Blizzard going on over there oh at the God. time? And you're in, in your... We're you're, at a volcano. And your, art, and your artist couldn't make it that day, so you had to fill someone else in? Oh my god. <laughs> Sorry, we're just joking. We love you, Blizzard. He's just a jerk. So I just like that this is a permanent object on the board, making imps forever. You can never kill all my imps. You can kill me, I suppose. Fuck I'll yeah. I'll try not to let you. Fuck yeah. Well, you might have 40 health. <laughs> well, so we might need to refrain. Well, each of these quests are uh, uh, class specific. So each class has the right. one, and you'll never have, or rarely have both. I suppose, hypothetically, um, some cards could steal. And this is the Necromancer? This is the Warlock, yes. The Warlock. Very cool. So keep in mind cards that relate to uh, discarding cards for that quest. Here's another um, build around quest the Warrior Quest, Fire Plume's Heart Quest. Play seven taunt minions, and the reward is Sephiroth. Sephiroth, even. Sephiroth? Sephiroth. Damn. Uh, which is Ragnaros' weapon, actually. Ooh. It's a three mana, four two weapon with battle cry. Your hero power becomes deal eight damage to a random enemy. Ooh, and you know what? I have no problem summoning seven taunt minions for that. Because <laughs> actually, I think taunts are my favorite abilities. Taunts are pretty cool. Um. I recall a game, I, one of the first games we played together um, during the You Can Complete Quests with Friends week, mm -hmm. I played Major Domo Executus, and I changed my hero power to deal 8 damage to a random enemy. And you thought that was broken as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I think I remember that one, yeah. Um, now the funny thing to a lot of people is yes it does seem really broken but major domo executives is also considered one of the worst cards in the game by a lot of people oh <laughs> so it's kind of a, a noob trap in a way which is interesting are you calling me a noob maybe damn it but <laughs> but the reason for that is actually that um when you become ragnaros and get that hero power with major domo executives your health becomes eight which means it's really easy to kill you but this soul for us doesn't do that you get to keep all your health and all your armor and just blow shit up, which is sweet. Fuck okay. yeah. Um, and another thing I appreciate about this quest is you're, you're playing out taunt minions to keep yourself alive, but a lot of times control decks that are just trying to keep themselves alive can't really close out the game. But Dan can solve for us uh, close out a game. Okay. So, yeah, eight damage is quite a bit. Yep. Next thing I wanted to look at was the other major mechanic in the set um, elementals. Okay. Now, Lay it on me, bro. Elementals, um, they resonate uh, with energy that they from each other. So um, there's often a lot of them have mechanics that are if you played at an elemental last turn, do something. And the pinnacle of that is Osric, a nine mana five five taunt with the battle cry, gain plus five health 
for each elemental you played last turn. Okay. Um, now this is the only one that counts each elemental. Usually just having played an elemental will suffice. But this can get pretty strong, um, pretty, pretty healthy, uh, if you plan for it. Uh, what do you make of that? As well, a taunt fan, how do you like it? <laughs> plus five for each elemental you played last, last turn. turn. So Osric in the bottom it shows elemental. So assuming that I played another elemental, it plays off. The other elementals play off this card, basically. Yes, that as well. So it, he plays off elementals, and then other elementals can play off. So they all play off each other. Oh, yeah, a lot of them do. There are some cards that interact with elementals that aren't elementals themselves, so they may break the chain. Do they play Pog off each other? Absolutely. Do they play dice off each other? On occasion. I like this card. <laughs> I tried to actually go go along with that without it being a joke, but I couldn't help but laugh. Gain plus five health for each elemental. Of course it's great. I love it. And I don't even have to do anything to earn it other than play elementals. <laughs> Which, if you're playing an elemental deck, you may want to do anyway. What's going on, guys? Showtime checking in. Thanks for watching the baddest card review of the Hearthstone expansion, Ungoro, featuring Mediocre Dude and myself. If you want to see more of Mediocre Dude, make sure to check out our podcast, The Baddest Cast, and also check out our past live stream of Hearthstone if you want to watch us play. Have a good one, guys. Showtime. Checking out.